Hi, everyone. Welcome to Math 110 College Algebra. My name is Mr. Chan, and I will be your instructor for this semester. So this video um, is what we call is what I call the welcome and syllabus video. And this video is for both my 15 weeks and my 10 week class. So the only difference between the, um, the 10 weeks and the 15 week class is the uh, the date of the class starts and the number of assignments in each week. So I will kind of flip back and forth here. So for my 10 week class, we will start on September 16. Okay. In the 15 week class, we start on um, August 12. All right. So in this video, I will go over, uh, I will show you a basic navigation of the D2L, your online learning management system, explaining the syllabus, going over your first week assignment called the homework syllabus, and we will discuss how you will proceed in this online class. So normally when students log into the class, okay, um, on the top on the top row here, click on content, and that will take us to our table of content. So the table of content on the left side is actually divided out into, into weeks. So the for the 15 week class, there are 15 of these. And for my 10 weeks class, there are 10 of these. Um, in the middle is where you're gonna see all the assignments. So we will come back to the course information here in a little bit. I will go over the first assignment uh, under the welcome week called the home, uh, syllabus homework. So let me just pick any other week. So normally when student um, for any given week, you are given lecture handouts that you need to print or copy down. So to print the lecture handouts, click on the Word document and scroll down a little bit and click on download. Please download the Word document um, onto your computer and then open up the Word document and print it out from um, print it out from the Word document. Because if you print directly from, if you click on print right here, right away, then a lot of symbols, mathematical symbol is not gonna show up, okay, on your handout. So please, if you want to print the lecture handouts, uh, download, download the Word document and print from the Word document. So normally what students do every week is print or copy down whatever is on the lecture handouts first, then watch the lecture video and take notes on the handout you just print it or copy them. So what you see on the video is just me working out the problems. Okay, so the, what you see, uh, everything you see on the lecture video is what's showing on the handouts. So you just feel, you just work it out the problem as I go over them. So there are, I have lecture videos on there in YouTube form, um, in YouTube, and I also have them for the MP4 format. So if you cannot access the YouTube, then you can always access the MP4 format. So once you print the lecture handouts or copy it down, watch a video and take notes on your handouts. Once you complete those, then you can begin to work on your homework assignments. And every week, you, there's a designated notes that you need to turn in. So for this particular week, you will only need to turn in topic seven notes that you took. So even though you took notes on topic seven, eight and nine, you will just need to turn in one of them for grades. All right, so when you complete, so after you're watching all the video and taking notes, you can begin to work on your homework. Some homework has um, both computer and the handwritten portion. Some homework topic only has a computer portion. So if it's a computer portion, you will just need to enter the answers in D2L on the computer. Okay. Let me get out of this. Some homework has both computer and handwritten portion. Let me show you the topic eight. So when you run into a topical homework that has both computer and handwritten portion, I will need you to print or copy down the handwritten portion first. Okay. Same way as you would do with a lecture, lecture handouts. Then open the computer portion and work and do both portion back and forth. So for topic number eight, 
first question on the handwritten portion is question number three. So that means other questions like question one and question two will be on the computer portion. So let me go back to the computer portion. So if, if you actually print or copy down the handwritten portion, then open the computer portion next. You're gonna see question one, you will type in the question one and two, you type in the answer in D2L. And question number three, since it's on the handwritten portion, all, all you will enter here is handwritten portion. Handwritten, just like what the instruction says to do. When you complete both portions, okay, when you complete both portions, submit the computer portion and upload your handwritten portion, okay? So the way how students turning the lecture handouts and the homework handwritten portion is by taking pictures, okay, using your mobile device, take pictures of what you wrote and upload them into the correct Dropbox. So the very last thing is the, the very last thing every week is your Dropbox. One of them is for the notes that you took. The other one is for the handwritten portion of the homework. Okay, so if you click on it, it's simply just want you to add an attachment. So, so after you took, you know, so when you finish in taking notes for topic number seven, take picture of all the notes and then upload them into D2L. Same thing with the handwritten portion throughout the semester. Okay, so for every week, what student, what student do first is print or copy down the lecture handouts then watch the lecture videos and taking notes on the handout you just print it or copy down. Complete the homework and then upload the notes and the handwritten portion into the Dropbox. So if we if I go to any given week, it's gonna be the same thing. Lecture handouts, videos in YouTube, MP4 format, and you got your homework. Some homework only has computer portion, some homework has both computer and the handwritten portion. And you got your drop boxes. All right, let's moving forward to the final exam week. The very last week of class is from um, November 18th to December 1st, okay? So for the final exam, there is an exam review that I need you to watch first. Then you can do your final exam. Final exam has both portions. So you will follow the same same um same direction as if you would do with your homework that has both portions. And here is your Dropbox. All right, let's go over your course information real quick. So thank again, I want to thank everybody for watching this welcome and syllabus video. It's a bit long because I I will actually go over your very first assignment here at the end of, at the end of this video. The welcome syllabus video is also right here. Um. Your syllabus is posted right here. My contact information, um, if there's an update of my office hour, I, I will actually post it right here. Um, if you do have questions or concern about um, the problems you're working on, you can always text me, take pictures of what you're struggling with and text me to my Google Voice number. You can always email me, okay? Or you can send me a D2L instant message, or you can go by email. If you need to meet with me, um, you can we can meet on Zoom. And um, here is the passcode. Just click on this link and then type in the meeting passcode. In this class, um, we actually use open education resource textbooks. I use this textbook for reference, but most of the students um, will just you know, copy or print the lecture handout, watch the lecture videos and take notes and then do the homework and then upload upload the notes and the handwritten portion. That's pretty much it. This video show you how you can, it is a one way you can upload your handwritten assignments, which is your, your handwritten portion of the homework and the note taken. So make sure the note taken and the, and the handwritten portion of the homework, it has to be handwritten it cannot be typed okay if it's typed i automatically count that as incorrect 
how to use graphical equation. I will show you how to do this at the end of the video. Uh, we student will enter a lot of a lot of mathematical symbols. So all those math mathematical symbols will be using graphical equation when we when you enter them in D2L. How to view assignment feedbacks. So if you if you have an assignment, a homework that is not a hundred, I provide feedback for the questions that you did not get a get a hundred on. So this video show you how to find that feedback. There's a couple steps um student got to go through to actually find the actual feedback. Um toward the end of the semester, if um if if students have a lot of missing assignment, this video show you how to check for your miss you know what you are missing. Okay, how to use Zoom. So there's a couple settings um that you might need if you need to meet with me. And this video show for new students, um, this video show you how to log into your student self-service and your student NETC email. So if you email me from D2L, I'll automatically reply back to your student NETC email. Now for all the homework assignments, okay, you get there's a start date and a due date. The class ends on December 1st. So that's why um, the end dates being set on December 1st allow students to make up the assignments at any time without, without asking me. But be very careful not to pile up so many missing assignments because um because then students are not following our attendance policy, which I will go over that with the syllabus. All right, one more thing on the top. If you cannot get up with me for some reason, um and you and you have questions about the problem you're working on, you can click on the tutoring right here. Um, we have an online tutoring service. Um, we have a contract with a company that do online online tutoring so you can actually student can actually utilize that so again this video is for both my 15 weeks and my 10 week class everything is the same except the start date of the class and number the number of assignments in each week because a 10 week class is is you know you will have a little bit more assignment to do each week since it's a shorter time frame all right let me go over the syllabus real quick so my content information is already posted on D2L. Our class is an online class. Here are the topic we're gonna go over in this class. So there are 29 topics. So these are the these are the a brief version of what we're gonna go through. All right, prerequisites. I already check everybody's prerequisite. So what's required for this class is student got to use our um, D2L, our college learning management system. Textbook, I already posted the link of the textbook. We're using open education resource textbook, so you will not need to purchase any books for this class. However, students are required to use a graphing calculator because I do a lot of graphing in the lecture videos. So um, if you do not have a graphing calculator, um, you can see if a friends or family have one that you can borrow, or you can try this. Um, this app on your phone called Calc 84. That's this calc. This is probably the closest one. Okay, similar to the one I use uh, in the lecture videos. WebMU is more of a web-based calculator. Okay, but for 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 mobile device, Calc 84 is probably one of the closest one. All right, here are the course objective and learning outcome for this class. All right, course requirements. So this is pretty much what I mentioned earlier. So for each week, student will print or copy down the lecture handouts, watch the lecture video, and take notes on the handouts that you just printed or copied. Complete both portion of the homework. Upload the homework handwritten portion into the to appropriate Dropbox and upload your uh, selected topical notes into the Dropbox. So remember, um, you're only turning one notes per week and the name. So which topic to turning is actually what the description says. The name of the Dropbox is tell you which topic. So for this particular week, you you will go through topic 15 and 16, and but you will only need to turn in topic 16 notes, just one of them. Uh, see where it is. All right, grading information. Okay, what will be counted for grades are your homework, note taken, and final exam. Additional additional information on the homework. All the homework are already posted in D two L. The questions are on both computer 
in on paper, which is your handwritten portion. If a topical homework has both computer and handwritten portions, students are required to first print or copy down the handwritten portion and then open the computer portion next. Once the handwritten portion is printed, copy, and the computer portion is open, then students will go back and forth between the two portions to complete the topical homework. After completing both portions, students will first submit the computer portion and then upload the handwritten portion into the appropriate Dropbox. Okay, both portion will be graded at the same time. So here is the kicker. A lot of students, you know, is actually falling behind. So they were turning the computer portion first, but that but that topic, everything is on the handwritten portion. So I so technically I don't have anything to grade. So because both portion will be graded at the same time, if the handwritten portion is not uploaded after the computer portion is graded then all the handwritten portion will have to count as incorrect. So I begin to grade your homework every Monday. So Monday, first thing I do is grade. Um, so when I grade on Monday, and once I run into a student's computer portion, but there's no hand, handwritten portion with it, okay, then all the handwritten portion will be counted as incorrect. Okay, so if if you if you are doing a topical homework that has both portions, handwritten and the computer portion, you got to make sure both portion is is turning. Okay, so I can grade both portion at the same time. The grades for the handwritten portion will be entered within the computer portion. So if the handwritten portion is uploaded after the computer is, after the computer portion is graded, the instructor will not go back and grade the handwritten portion. I automatically count that as incorrect. So please remember to upload the handwritten portion right after submitting the computer portion. Okay. So if you, if if students are not ready to submit both portions, then just don't submit neither. You know, okay, make sure you submit both, you know, make sure you are ready to submit both, just to submit both. All right, all topical homework only has one attempt, you'll be counted for your weekly attendance, and I, and I do not drop any homework grades. So a lot of students always trying to turn in the computer portion first, and then that computer portion, the big majority of the points is on the handwritten portion, then you know, I you know once I'm as I'm grading, I'm not once I grade your computer portion, I'm not going back because I'm pulling up both your computer and handwritten portion side by side to grade to grade them. So again, if you're not ready to submit both, then just don't submit it. Okay, it's no big deal. Just finish it as soon as you can. Make it up as soon as you can. Okay. All right. Notes. There are selected topical notes each week for you to. Take and while watching the lecture videos, you are required to handwrite the notes and upload the notes into appropriate Dropbox. Um, please also handwrite the handwritten portion of the homework as well. I have students before type everything. And if you type any answers, okay, for the handwritten portion, I automatically count that as incorrect. I'm not reading all that. Okay, gotta be your handwriting. Students will write. So for your note taken, please write your name. And the date you watch your video in pen on the top right hand corner of every page uploaded into the Dropbox. Weekly submission of the notes taken will be counted for attendance. All right, final exam materials are already posted in D2L. Please watch the 110 exam review video before you attempt the final exam. So same thing for the final as the, um, as I show you, the final exam has both computer and computer portion and the handwritten portion. So please follow the same procedure as with the homework. Here are, you, are our departmental hand, um, department grading rubric for the handwritten portion and computer portion. Be very careful um, if, it, if it looks like an AI-generated answers, okay, and then student just copy and paste AI-generated answers into, in, in the, into the box, then if I see that's a, if that's uh, AI generated, then I automatically count that as incorrect. Okay, you will only get partial credits for copy and paste. <clears throat> okay, because that's not really your work. That's just AI generated work. All right, here are the grading scales. We're on the 10 point scales. Here are the weekly outlines 
for the 15 weeks and I can show you the weekly outline for the 10 weeks. So like I said earlier, um, the only difference between the 10 week class and the 15 week class, whatever which class you are in, uh, is the start date and the number of assignments in each week. So for for my 10 week class, we, you know, you would just have a little bit more assignment each week, okay? But however, both classes will end at the same date, okay? One just starts five weeks later than the other one. All right, let's take a look at your attendance policies. This is called the attendance policy for no-shows, okay? Um, if a student does not complete the syllabus homework, okay, after the first week of class begins, he or she will be marked, oh, sorry, the student will be marked, will be marked as a no-show and be dropped from the course. Now, if the student do you submit, if the student does submit a syllabus homework, the student will, is bounded by the following attendance requirement. So students are encouraged to speak with their instructors for guidance if extenuating circumstances arise. To successfully complete the course, student must maintain a minimum attendance rate of 80%. So at any given time, you need to, you need to, you cannot miss more than 20% of the work you're supposed to turn in for the whole course, okay? And generally speaking, that's probably about two weeks worth of assignments. If you miss two weeks of assignment, you, you are right there um, around missing 20% of the whole course, 20% of the assignment you're supposed to turn in. So please, main, please maintain a minimum attendance rate of 80%. This means students are expected to active, actively participate in at least 80% of the course activities, including, you know, for us, that will be just homework, note taking, and the final exam. So if you, if you, so if a student, you know, piled up a lot of homework, you know, exceeding way over 20% of, of the work, you know, that has been, you know, that's missing then the instructor you know, has the right to drop the student for excessive absence, okay? So be very careful not to pile out the homework. So normally I will contact student. If, when when student reach the 20% um, with the work that's missing, then I will begin to, to, to reach out to the students, you know, you know, regarding to, you know, is everything okay? You know, why, why the work is, has not been turned in. So again, even though a student can make up assignment at any time of the semester, but that does not mean you you wait till the end of the semester and then start turning in because we got to go by this attendance policy, okay? All right, volunteer withdraw from the course. If you something happened where you have to withdraw from the class, you will get a W. All right, discussion etiquettes. Uh, student with disability, if you do have document disability and require accommodation, please contact the Dean of Student Service. He or she will provide guidance regarding to your official um, documentation of disability and accommodation needs. Here are our academic dishonesty and honesty policies. FERPA, the Family Education Rights and Privacy Act statement, basically is saying that not not any but not any person can can actually get um get the students um uh, academic records. Okay. Is actually protected by this federal laws. All right, so that's it for the syllabus. So I'm gonna go back to your first week and go over um, your syllabus homework which, um, together with you. So this is our, you know, so you got two things to do to, for the, during the welcome week. One of them is syllabus homework, okay? Because this will this assignment, if you do not submit it, that means you that means I'm uh, assuming you're not interested in the class, okay? So then you'll be dropped with no show. Now, if you do the syllabus homework, if you do submit it, that means you are actually telling telling the college that you you want to take this class. So for some reason, if this is the only assignment you're turning and you did not turn in anything else, once, you know, if I don't hear from you, um, you will actually be dropped from the class if you don't continue to, to, to do other assignments. So a lot of times students are not quite realizing by submitting this, you are being charged for the class, okay? You will be charged for the class, even though you've, even though afterward you're not interested in the class. 
So when you submit this and you say, oh man, I really don't want to take this class, you know, you need to, you need to contact the enrollment center to drop this class before the end of the first week. Otherwise you will be charged for it. All right, first question. Consider the following question. You will be easier to write on the answers before entering inside the box below. So a lot of your homework has this um, instructions. So simply just write down your answer on a piece of paper and then enter it here, okay? A lot of questions, you will see this instruction. Please use graphical equation when entering answers. So graphical equation is right here where the plus sign is. So the first, so question one, part one says, what is the best phone number to get in contact with you? So this plus sign, click on it, click on the equation, click on graphical equation. So this thing will pop up. This is where we enter all the, all the mathematical symbols. So for number one, what is the best contact phone number? So please enter your contact number. So the question one has both parts, okay? So for every part, once you enter, once you enter the answer, click on insert. All right, click on any empty space and press enter for number two's answer. The phone number you provide in number one is the sale, home, or work number. Please let me know which one is which. Let me know which one is which and click on insert and that's it. Once you enter your answer, you it's actually checked. And when you see the check mark, that means your answer is being saved. So if you cannot, if you cannot finish in the homework in one sitting, you can, um, you can just exit out the page. Okay. It will save your answer. You can come back to it. So the re so there are two reasons I will need um your content your content numbers. Number one, um, if a student's missed more than 20% of the work. Then I will begin to um I will actually text you from my Google Voice um phone number and asking you, you know, and letting you know that you have missed more than 20% of the work and trying to see what's going on. Another reason I will need your content information is for registration of the following semester. Okay, those are the only two reasons. All right, question number two. Okay, what are the best practices when using D2L? So please copy these down. Number one, please use a computer or a laptop instead of mobile device. A lot of times mobile device is not really, is you know, it's not really, doesn't function very well with D2L, especially with um, this plus sign right here, the graphical equation, it doesn't, it doesn't do very well with the graphical equation. Please use Google Chrome when you, um, when you get on D2L, Google Home is the most compatible with D2L. All right, make sure your computer laptop has a Word document, okay. If it does not have a Word document, you can actually um, watch this video. Under the course information, um, the student's email, um, self-service and email. That video will show you um, how to, what, you know, why I show you how to log into your student NETC email on, on a computer. Then there, there's a place where you can actually download um, download work um your office uh, your your office three sixty five onto your computer, and please use graphical equation to enter answers when it's asking you to. Otherwise, it will be counted as incorrect. I do not read. I do not read. In, you know, if it's asking you for it, and you don't use it, I I won't read your answer. I automatically just count it incorrect. All right, what's the last day of class? All right, please copy this down. Last day of class, Sunday, December 1st, 2024. And our our assignments, everything ends at 11 15, excuse me, 11.30 p.m. That's when everything will cut off. You will have no more access to the class after this, after this date and that time. Can you email your instructor using a personal email? The answer is no, because most of those emails will come in as a spam. All right, some homework are, some homework have both computer and handwritten portion. If the question are not on the handwritten portion, where are other questions? Gotta be on the what? Gotta be on the computer portion, right? 
All right, some homeowner has both computer and the handwritten portion. Both portion will be graded at the same time. If the handwritten portion is not uploaded after computer portion is graded, then all the handwritten portion will be counted as incorrect. All right, number seven. Who can student contact about withdrawing from a class? So who can you contact regarding to withdrawing from a class? You can contact the enrollment center or the student service dial it by dialing um, the phone number, or you can contact me using your student NETC email, D2 or instant message, or you can text me. Let me know something happened. You know, you, you got to withdraw from the class, okay? All right, what are three types of graded assignment in this class? We have homework, note taken, and one ten final exam. All right, question number nine. All right, what is the last graded assignment? The last graded assignment is actually one ten final exam. All right. In short, that we'll reply your detail in the message. Uh, we think 36 hours. All right, last question. So I will show you how to enter some of these mathematical symbols that we will, that you will actually enter. So I mean, remember, I'm, I'm using a computer, so I got keyboard here. So for number one, okay, let's go to the graphical equation, the plus sign equation, graphical equation. All right, so for number one, all right, open and close parentheses. So we are on the on the top row here, we're on the first tab. Okay, that would be the first one. Okay, I'm gonna click off of it, comma, space. Open and close bracket is right here. And open and close brace is right here. Oops. All right, so once I enter the answer for number one, I insert. If you enter all five of these under the same graphical equation, sometimes it will not display for you. So one answer, one graphical equation. All right, click on any empty spot, press enter. For number two, all right, I'm gonna use a keyboard here. Open parentheses, so that will be shift nine, space, close bracket. Right, close bracket is right above enter. Coffin space. Infinity sign is right here. The U is a union sign, which is right here. All right, number three. All right, fraction along with the exponent. So for fraction, we use a fraction bar, no slash. Anything with a slash, I count automatically incorrect. Please use fraction bar on the top, 3x. Exponent is this one, superscript, squared, come down, 4y. These are regular letter x and y on your keyboard, okay? When student using funky letters, that means you're using your mobile device. All right, so third power. All right, I'm gonna put my cursor right next to the fraction bar, comma, space, x plus one whole thing squared. So I'm gonna use the open and close parenthesis in the parenthesis x plus one. Okay, regular x. All right, this is a multiplication sign. This is not an x, this is a multiplication sign. Put a cursor outside the parenthesis exponent squared. Number four. All right, not equal to this symbol, second tab on the top row, top left, a box with a slash over it. Inside, press the equal sign, okay, equal button, or you can use this equal button, comma, space. All right, this is regular letter F, F of X. So I'm gonna tap in a, I'm gonna enter a letter F on a keyboard, open, close parenthesis, and put X in there, comma, space. Cube root of x squared. So this is a square root, the one right here. Allow me to enter anything higher than a square root. So it's cube root 
of x to the second power. All right, number five is more towards the very end of the semester. Okay, this is a letter. Um, this is a letter L. This is L N, not I N. L N. Okay, L N is natural log. Well, th you know, this is more towards the, toward the end of the semester. You will you will start seeing these. Okay, so to enter them, the top row here go towards the end. And you have a log, okay, with a subscript. So we call this log with a base two of x. All right, natural log ln right here of x. Just put an x inside the inside the parenthesis. There you go. So, um, if you have questions or concern about this class or anything you're you know you're not quite sure of, please email me, message me, or take pictures of what you're working on, and then text it to me or email it to me so and, and I will be glad to um, answer any question you may have okay so please um submit um, if you want to continue this course please submit your syllabus homework and then work on your the other first week assignment which is a quick introduction of yourself to the class okay so we will keep in touch through the semester thank you so much for watching